I want to discuss this a little bit further with Leslie Vinjamuri. She joins me now from London. She's head of the U.S. and America's program at Chatham House. Leslie, lovely to see you. Uh, I want to talk about the impeachment plan in just a moment, but first I want to talk about uh, President Biden's COVID economic plan. Does this essentially, though, set up the president's first major clash, political clash, with Republicans in the Senate, particularly because he says he needs more, he's going to need a bigger stimulus? Absolutely. I mean, it's it's a very um, large plan, as we know, 1.9 trillion, and it's really focused on putting those stimulus checks that that Congress had been battling um, with itself over for the, the size of those stimulus checks for many months uh, before the inauguration. That battle will resurface. Um, how much to give the president? There's a lot in there on um, vaccine dissemination, on public health on unemployment, um, lifting that, that baseline up at the federal level. Uh, so there will, be, um, there will be a battle over the size, but it is imperative, I think, to get that crisis package through. Uh, because, of course, what the Biden administration wants to be able to do is to move forward on the pandemic so that they can really address the longer-term economic problems, um, investing in infrastructure and energy transition, a green, a climate plan. Uh, those are those are really the big wins um, for the American economy, for the American people. But it, it's not possible to get there without really getting through this pandemic first. And so that is that is the first order on the agenda. And of course, the necessary first step is getting the cabinet confirmed. So all of these pretty meaty, important issues to be dealt with. But then also on top of that, the impeachment. It has been delayed, I suppose is the wrong word, for two weeks, uh, but it's certainly not happening next week. How much does that complicate the president's attempts to unify the country, whether this impeachment is on Wednesday or in two weeks' time? In many ways, is President Biden caught between a rock and a hard place here? Yeah, and no, this is going to be very difficult. I think it's good that it's been pushed back for a couple of weeks because that breathing space is absolutely critical, not only for affecting real change, but also for the symbolism of a new president, a new team being able to demonstrate to the American people and, and of course, frankly, to the rest of the world that America can function again, that there's competent government in place, that it can begin to really move forward. And the number one concern for so many people watching America inside and out is that America can um, deal with this extraordinary, not only partisanship, but division across the country. Remember, people still have in their minds the number of people who voted for Donald Trump, the Capitol attacks, uh, hor horrifying and shocking to so many people are sitting right there. But I think there still is this question, of course, that there needs to be a reckoning, there does need to be an official accounting so pushing it back is important, but ultimately, um, you know, we've seen many countries around the world deal with this question of how do you look back, but also look forward. And when you don't look back, when you don't have an official reckoning, inevitably, the issue resurges. Uh, let's also talk about foreign policy. Um, the Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, has reached out to the NATO Secretary General, Jens Stoltenberg. He's, he actually made a point of saying that this was his first call of the job. I mean, signaling outreach to NATO and to allies, stuff we haven't heard in, in years. Um, multilateralism, <laughs> I think, is a word that is no longer a swear word within the American um, political system, at least publicly now. So, so what is this? What is this? do beyond the sort of the symbolism of this outreach? I, I, well, it is it, the, not to underestimate, as you've said, right, for four years, Donald Trump really um, assaulted um, America's commitment to NATO, and, and it really had ripple effects in, in terms of really undermining the partnership between the U.S. and Germany and all of America's NATO partners. So the symbolism can't be understated. It also uh, will kickstart diplomacy, and it kickstarts it in a way that's really saying we're going to work with you multilaterally, not bilaterally first. Um, and um, and we take America's security commitment to Europe very, very seriously. That's also important, of course, in the context um, of a of a condition where Russia is has been very aggressive, very assertive, where America's um, experienced dramatic, wide scale cyber attacks on its government agencies and the private sector, and where it's also seeking to do something positive with Russia, which is to renegotiate an extension of the New START Treaty. So saying to Russia also, we are working with Europe, we are all in this together, 
Um, and so, you know, deterrence is going to be much tougher and much clearer. I think all of that is just incredibly important context. And it, it does say to the rest of the world, America's got its own problems at home, but we are moving forward uh, with a multilateral and very productive um, international agenda. Okay. Always good to speak to you. Leslie Vinjamiri there, live from London, from Chatham House. Thank you.